Welcome to another video. Let's take this limit problem on. This one is a little bit tasking, not because it is impossible, but because the number of steps and algebraic simplification we'll have to do, yeah, makes it very demanding. So without wasting time, let's just get into it. Simply looking at this limit problem, you can see that x is approaching infinity. So we cannot plug in infinity. We can only just observe and see what's going to happen, right? So if you observe, um, this is going to get bigger, but you're going to have 1 over infinity. The infinite root of a number, that tends to go to 1, actually. Okay, the infinite root of infinity is 1. We go the same thing here. This is going to give us 1. So this is 1 minus 1. The same thing happens under. So it is a case of 1 minus 1. But you can't really establish that because these are limits, not actual values. So what we could do is, just to make our lives easy, I would get rid of these 1 over x as exponents because they're difficult to deal with. So I'm going to replace 1 over x with t. Okay, so I'm going to say... Um, let x, 1 over x, be equal to t, which means that x equals 1 over t. So what happens is I'm going to change this variable of my limit such that as x goes to infinity, watch this, as x goes to infinity, t is going to go to 0, right? And as t goes to 0, x will go to, well, if, if t is going to 0, if we try to use this relationship, t can just go to 0. It has to go to 0 from only one direction. Because if, it, if t is equal to 0, this would be undefined. But we want it to approach in a certain direction. Because now, because x is going to infinity from the right, infinity is on the right. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this into a... Uh, a single direction limit. So see what we're going to have. We're going to have a one-sided limit in this case because this is going to positive infinity. So this is going to be approaching zero from the right, okay? Because x is coming from the positive side. So here we're going to say that this implies that um, as x approaches um, t approaches zero from the right. Okay, there is no room for it to be negative because it's approaching infinity. So it's a positive number. So this is what we're going to do. T is approaching zero from the right. That's essential. So we're going to change this problem now so that what we have here is this problem becomes the limit as T goes to zero from the right of the top part becomes x plus 2 will now become 1 over t plus 2. 1 over t plus 2 raised to power t minus 1 over t raised to power t. The bottom is going to be 1 over t plus 3 raised to power t minus 1 over t raised to power t. So you would ask me, how does this make life easier? Well, you're going to see, because now, at least the exponent is just t, and I know it's going to zero. It's very easy to see now. Anything, remember, anything raised to power zero is one, so it's one minus one over one minus one. So that's easier to cope with. Now, I still need to do simplifications, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply every single term that I see here by t raised to power t so that I can at least take care of these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by t to the t. And I'm going to multiply the bottom also by t to the t. Okay, so I multiply this by this, multiply this by this. Let's see what we get. So this is equal to the limit 
as t goes to 0 from the right, if I multiply this by this, see, because they have the same exponent, I can bring in the t to multiply this. All I'm going to get is just 1, 1 raised to power t, which is 1. So on top, I'm going to get minus 1. Under also, I'm going to get minus 1. So the task is here. So if I move t raised to power t into this picture, look, this is going to become 1 over t plus 2 times t, everything raised to power t. Because they both have power t, I can just put them together. It's a multiplication. So t times 1 over t is going to be t, and t times 2 is going to be 2t. No, it is going to be 1 plus 2t raised to power t. That's it. So this is 1 plus 2t raised to power t. And this would be 1 plus 3t raised to power t. It's beginning to look a lot. No, not Christmas, but it's looking better than I was thinking. So now, can we take this limit without a problem? Because at, at every point, you have the indeterminate form. Now, if I try to plug in 0, if I put 0 here, this is still going to be equal to 1 minus 1. So this is still the indeterminate form. I cannot do anything about it. So I'll have to use L'Hopital's rule. Remember that L'Hopital's rule allows you to differentiate the top and differentiate the bottom. That's where the work is, is the derivative of this function. Because when we differentiate negative 1, it goes to 0. Differentiate this goes to 0. So these two will disappear as soon as we apply L'Hopital's rule. But how do we differentiate 1 plus 2t raised to power t? If you can do that, then you're good. You just plug in 0 at the end. So if we apply L'Hopital's rule to the top part, let's try to differentiate this. So I'm going to say, because it's not easy to differentiate, okay? I'm going to say, um, let's just do it sideways, somewhere here. Let y be equal to 1 plus 2t raised to power t. Then we can take the natural log of both sides to bring this t down. It's going to be t times 1 plus 2t. Okay. So now, let's differentiate both sides implicitly. If we differentiate this implicitly, this is going to be y prime over y. That's how you differentiate any natural log function, is the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. Always do that. If we differentiate the right-hand side, oh, this is raised to power. No, what did I write? This is incredibly wrong. When you take down the t's natural log, ln of 1 plus 2t, come on, don't make that mistake. So now I have to apply the product rule. If I apply the product rule, it is differentiate the first, keep the second. So I'm going to have ln of 1 plus 2t plus keep the first, differentiate the second. If I keep the first, I'm going to have t times, if I differentiate this, it's going to be the derivative of the argument divided by the argument. The derivative of 1 plus 2t is 2, so it's just going to be 2 over 1 plus 2t. So if we clean up, you notice that y prime is going to be whatever you get here multiplied by y. Let's clean this side up. This is going to be ln of 1 plus 2t plus, what do we have here? It's going to be 2t over 1 plus 2t. Oh, 2t over 1 plus 2t. And everything multiplied by y. This y is going to go multiply this. And what was y again? 1 plus 2t raised to power t. 1 plus 2t raised to power t. Mm. So, how does this help me? So this is the derivative I'm going to get on top. Ha! Huh. That doesn't look good at all. But, looks like we don't have a choice. So, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it here. So, I'm going to have raised to power t. That's the top derivative. The beauty of this exercise is that I don't have to repeat all of this. The same thing that happened on top is what's going to happen 
at the bottom two because I just need to change this two to three for this bottom part. So I'm just gonna write. Let's get rid of this. If you observe, we have a product of functions, both on top and under. So what I could do is see if I can take the limit of this separately and it doesn't give me infinity or zero because that would be a problem if I get zero or infinity in either product. So let's see. This is equal to the limit as t goes to zero from the right of this part, which I'm gonna write as the natural log of one plus two t plus two t over one plus two t divided by the natural log of one plus three t plus three t over one plus three t times the limit as t goes to infin to not infinity zero from the right of these two will become a product one plus two t in fact, let me write it this way. 1 plus 2t over 1 plus 3t. Everything raised to power t. And because I can apply these limit laws, I know this limit exists. I know this one exists. If we keep manipulating, this is going to exist. And this one too, we're going to see that as t goes to 0, if I plug in 0 everywhere, see what happens. 1 plus 0 over one plus zero gives me one over one. One over one is one. What is one raised to power zero? It's one. So clearly this entire system is one. So this is times one. So my focus is on this one. It's good that I didn't get zero because then I have to worry whether this is infinity or not. And I didn't get infinity, so I don't have to worry whether this is zero or not. So now, all I have to do is look at this. Can I plug in zero? Let's see. If I plug in zero here, this is natural log of one. So this is zero plus two. That's zero. Uh, that's going to be zero plus zero. No. That's already a bad sign. There's gonna be zero plus zero. So that's a bad, bad sign. So it looks like we have to do L'Hopital's rule one more time. Okay, the good thing is I just have to do it for the top. Then I'll just duplicate the same thing for the bottom part. So let's apply L'Hopital's rule again. By L'Hopital's rule, this would be the limit as t approaches zero from the right so let's differentiate the top. If I differentiate this, let's do it here because we don't know how messy it's gonna be. So if I differentiate this, it's gonna be the derivative of the inside divided by the inside. So that's gonna be two over one plus two t. Nice. If I differentiate this, I have to use the quotient rule, right? Okay, so it should be plus. If we apply the quotient rule to this, it's going to be this times the derivative of the top, which is going to be 1, it's v du minus u dv, okay? So it's going to be 1 plus 2t multiplied by the derivative of the top, which is just 2, minus the top 2t times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 2 all over the square of 1 plus 2t. Ah, let's simplify this and see what we get. Let's go this way. So here I have um, 2 over 1 plus 2 over 1 plus 2t. Oh, this is squared. Come on, don't make that mistake. And here it's going to be 2 plus 4t minus 4t. So this is going to be plus 2 2 over 1 plus 2t squared. Oh, that's, in, that's even easy because now it looks like we can put these two together uh, with a common denominator. This is going to be 2 times 1 plus 2t over 1 plus 2t squared. That's, that becomes um, 
2 plus 4t plus 2, which is going to be 4 plus 4t. Interesting. Did I make a mistake? 4 plus 4t. That's it. So this is going to be on top 4 plus 4t over 1 plus 2t squared. 1 plus 2t squared. Like that. Divided by. Now it looks like I know what happened. This number was doubled. So here we're going to have, what are we going to have? 6 plus 6t over 1 plus 3t squared. Exactly. Multiplied by 1. Okay, let's put this giant 1 here. So now we just need to plug in 0. Let's go. So this would be equal to, if I plug in 0 here, this is going to be 4 plus 0 over 1 plus 0 squared, which is just 4. This is just 4. Nice. Over, if I plug in 0 here, it's going to be 6 plus 0 over 1 plus 0 squared, which is just 6 over 1, which is 6. Ha! Huh. The answer is 2 over 3. <laughs> Beautiful. 2 over 3. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.